the weekend podcast on Vox Markets with Justin, Peter and Steve. Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Does it sound okay or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you sound fantastic. <laughs> Welcome to the Easter weekend podcast. Uh, Paddy's doing a mic test. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. This is distorted, Paddy. This is distorted. Is that better? Is that better? What, what, what? You see, the two, is that, we, what we need is a happy medium pad, you know, right in the middle there. Yeah, it's, I, uh, I need you to tell me what it sounds like, because yeah, I can't that, hear it. That's all right, it sounds a bit echoey, but it's okay. fine. But uh, we've got a full house here, we've got uh, Paddy, Pete, Steve, you're all lads. Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, now, Steve did, went went off grid last week, didn't he, Steve? Mm. We were to call you at Brecon Beacons, you know, the Welsh now don't have to be so local, they can be sort of local, but not too local. Mm. Oh, back off, love, don't get too local with me. <laughs> Um, mm. So where did you go, Steve, in, in the Brecon Beacons? Yeah, I had a bit of a nightmare because we got down. It was um, too windy and snowy at the top of the mountain, so we had to abandon... That's when you were trying to call me, so I had to abandon ship and go to a different mountain. You took a ship, ship. there? Don't ship. take a ship to the Brecon no. Beacons, Steve. It's, it's, it's mountains. Yeah. What, was the name of the mountain. Mount- what was the name of the mountain again, Steve? Ke- Kevin. Uh, Lord, Lord Hereford's Knob. <laughs> That's why they went there. Right. Whoa! Whoa! Steve, we looked at the map and go, Whoa, let's go there! So we so we went and a genuine so we went then to Cockett Hill instead. <laughs> Let's look for another uh, yeah, mountain yeah. with the sound well, of an well, appendage. One of, the, one of the mountains that is on the list is um, Fanny Big as well. We go <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I'm not looking. Did he go? Did he go up Fanny Big? Did he go up no, there? For a couple, we have got that plan though. Yeah, a lot of us went up Fanny Big. <laughs> all of us. Yeah, we, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. Who uh, would recommend a nice little trip up Fanny Big? Uh, right. Lovely. Let's get on with stocks and shares, then, shall we? Hey, right, sorry, yeah. Uh, so it's it's Q2, lads. How's Q2 you know, feeling to you? Are feeling good or what? What's with your thoughts? Hey, hey. Yeah, re- yeah, really good so far. I had a good, um, I had a good Q1. I, was, I don't want to talk about this, but measuring performance, why it's important, why it's not important, why you should do it or shouldn't do it, you know, because uh, Q1 has ended. And I try and do, and I, I, I posted it on, my, on the website there, sharepickers.com, and, uh, and Q1 was very good for me. You know, we had, we had a, it was a dodgy bit in the middle, but the last few days were very good when some of my bigger holdings did quite well, you know, and they sold off then on, on the on Thursday it ended, didn't it, um, uh, March, and then they sold off on the Friday, but um, that's largely what? down to steam. Okay. Today is Friday. Today is Good Friday. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thursday. You're, Thursday. You're one day in your ears there. But Wednesday, yeah. yeah in, in your mm. ears as, as well. Um, That's it. Also, about uh, ISOs, uh, littering, I think, is a good thing. Well, Steve got a video. This is why I think it was very, very good. Um, uh, Gfinity had news out, of course, um, in terms, and uh, Paddy, two fans. Paddy, you got another fan. Another one said, I like Paddy on the podcast. I don't know who it yeah. was. I saw it somewhere. I think it was on the chat group, uh, the, the Share Pickers Investment Club chat group. But someone did say... And uh, someone email. I don't know. So you got two fans now, Pad. Oh, right. terrific! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, we suspect it's um, it's you know, it's, it's you um, using mm. different, <laughs> different names. Different names. Yeah. I tell you, it's April Fool and uh, April first in the week. Of course, I tell you what, most of the companies on AIM are a complete joke, aren't they? <laughs> As is my portfolio. <laughs> um, but I don't know if you saw it. Well, my my favourite one was. Um, Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah. I've got, like, for, uh, yes. I read that story about 15 times and yes. I couldn't understand why people were confused by it because I thought, well, that's just their name, isn't it? Like, yeah. is that not always been their Because you, you are, you, <laughs> are you dyslexic, are you? Yeah, I, 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 I couldn't, I, I literally, I, I just end up, gave up, I gave up on it and just skimmed past it every time. I, was, I didn't understand why people were losing well, their minds well, about well, it. Well, I'll explain it, right? The Germans there, well known for their sense of humour, of course, mm. the Germans. They said, have you got a funny joke for April Fools? What are we going to do? We're going to change our name from Volks, yeah, right. to Volts. Volts it in, let's pick Volts! <laughs> <laughs> and they all laughed, you know, wrote and laughed yeah. in for days on end. And said, yes, and then the next day come to the boardroom and said, Hans, uh, we're getting ready to release the, the, the tomorrow, uh, Fire Press. It's going to be so funny. And uh, Hans says, I've released it. What? I've released the press release. It's too day early, you silly fool! <laughs> yeah. It turns into Chinese then. It went Chinese there, but yeah. 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 But yeah, no, that... That's quite a good idea, yeah, I know. genuinely, well, of course, a Volkswagen is German for people uh, carrier, isn't it, really? So people, the oh, car of the people, people of the car, car of the people, yeah. yeah. So it's um, Volks, uh, Volks, hey, that's all, Volks, as in Volks. 
Right. And then uh, Wagner is a car. But so, so it's a people's car. But yeah, but in America, they were going to do it in America only because they said that... Um, and I thought, do you know what? Volts. It, everything's going to be electric anyway in a couple of years' time. So that's very good, Volts, Wagner. They're not, they haven't got a big share of the market. And of course, they were... Funny thing is, though, ironically, they were done for tampering with diesel limiters, weren't yeah. they? And, uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. But no, we did it funny, funny. So we laughed for days. We laughed for days on end because we are very good with our senses of humor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I just, You're right. Yeah, no, I, like no, I yeah. just thought of them there. I just thought of the German board of I know, Volkswagen. I think it's genius. It's very really good. It's very really good. It's, 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 got, it's got to be hard, though, every year trying to outdo your last year's joke or your Fable Fools. Do you not think, though? But do, they, do they have to do it, though? What's the yeah, point? Just, what's the point? <laughs> it's like, uh, do we need forced fun? I suppose mm. sometimes, maybe. I did read you one. You love fun, Jess. I did, yeah, force. <laughs> <laughs> I did read one where I thought was a genuine uh, April Fool. It turned out not to be, and I thought it was. Do you see Nippon Airways? Uh, they're charging $540 to go and sit in their first class on the planes and have a proper, you know, full course meal. And I thought, that's an April Fool. I, said, I, I did it on the podcast on the, on the Wednesday, but I thought, that's an April Fool. It'll be, it revealed it on. But it wasn't. It's still there. They've been reporting the news. Who's going to pay $540 to sit in a plane and have a f- meal? I hate what? having food on the plane. Oh. What? So, get, so you'd walk up from cattle class, have your meal, and then walk back to cattle class? No, but obviously not flying anywhere, because there's no... Oh, it's it's COVID. The you're, you're, oh, sat oh, in, you're, sat, you're just sat in the runway. Oh, yeah. Sorry. They what? just turned them into, like, restaurants. Apparently Korea oh. started it, and oh. now Japan is starting it. And pe- there's demand for it. What is wrong with people? What is wrong with the, just the general public? The general public are idiots, and you see yeah. that by you see that by the pe- amount of people just pouring out of their houses now, as if they haven't been out for years on end. When they've been going out pretty much, you know, pretty much non-stop for the last couple of months, thinking you know, as if we haven't seen anyone for years, and we've got to go and see the grass because you know, in the mountains. But what, what's wrong with you? They're idiots, aren't they? In fact, let's go. Let's extend this bit. Do you know what I hate, Steve? This is what this is. This is what comes. No, 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 Steve. Steve showed oh. us. Uh, she, Steve uh, got a bit nasty yesterday. I said, "What time are you uh, coming on the podcast, Steve?" He said, "Well, it depends what my plans are. Actually, and I'm really busy." And uh, I thought, "What's going on in Wales? Then? What is it, Mardi Gras?" I, I didn't it? say like that at all. That's the you misread that completely. I didn't. I misread it spot on. And then, and, and see, well, I'm sorry. Mm. And, and even Pete had come back. He said, "What?" I said, "What? What you got going on in Wales, then, Steve?" So, I'm going to wait around for you. Am I? Oh, mm. sorry, no, I'm a bit that's, ang- that's so, not how I said it. Sorry, I'm a bit angry, he said, and he, he, he uploaded a video of, of, of course, Steve's tech house. He's got, uh, he's got a Ringo, and you, Steve? Yeah, Welsh version of Ring. Ring. Is that what you got? Ringo. <laughs> yeah, Ringo. <laughs> ring, ring, oh. A Ringo. Um, no, so we got one of those now, camera outside that records everything. You know, right. every bit of movement, it records it, and obviously and you, it goes up to the cloud. But Steve, explain what you saw there. Um, well, yeah, I just looked outside and there was a, um, a Costa coffee cup just out on the streets. And it was bin day, so I thought I might have blown out of the bin. I was going to look on the camera to see where it came from. And it wasn't. Some car literally drove up into my cul de sac, reversed, placed their coffee cup out the door on the floor, then carried on driving, and then threw the second one out down the road. And I was like, what? What's wrong well, with you? Yeah. Do you know what? I, I feel like you're actually ripping their wing mirrors off and smashing oh, their heads so apart with it. I feel like you're m- but, murdering them. <laughs> Dude, there was a little bit of anger as I was kind of like looking at the footage, but at the same time, there's a little bit like, right, this is going to the council and you will be getting an £80 fine. Yeah, what's good is Steve did a screenshot of the car, he highlighted the, 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 the registration number and he sent it to the council. Now, I love that. Because, first of all, when someone litters, right, they're, mm. they're disrespecting everyone in the environment. Everyone. Yeah. You may as well mm. just come up, come up and, and, and urinate on my face, you know. That's, yeah. how, that's how offensive that is, because right. you don't care about the environment I live in, you don't care about me. So, you doing that, you little scumboy, if everyone did that, right? If everyone did yeah. that, yeah. what yeah. awful place it would be, 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 be to live. And people are doing it now, and, you know, in festivals, walking around, and just yeah. look after your environment, you imbeciles. What I like about it, what I really like about it, is tech, right? And just beat this dunderhead. The dunderhead just, just, he just casually opened his door, 
put it on the thing, drove off it. No, no we, we got you, dumb, out, dumb head, brain dead. Yeah, the camera's got you, it's got your registration, that's it. And tech wins, you know? Tech yeah. clever, man in car, dumping litter thick. Do you know what? They were actually kids. Um, I think they were quite aware that, well, they obviously knew what they were doing, but as they were kind of reversing, you, I don't think you could see it on the, on the phone, but on the bigger screen, you can clearly see them looking at the houses. They're obviously looking for a camera or a ring. I haven't actually got a ring, by the way. I've got a CCTV, but it's kind of hidden under things. You can't see it. So they're obviously looking, checking the cameras on the houses. They've done it anyway. And like, yeah. I mean, I know this is Wales, but this sounds like a really dull weekend. Why are yeah. they doing that? Well, you know, why why are they driving to like a really quiet cul-de-sac to dump one coffee cup? They're, they're, I, don't they're, I don't think they are thinking that. Too, two think. cups, two cups, cards. Don't you think they're, they're probably looking for a house or whatever they're, they're going to? And then the littering is just incidental. Like, they don't even think about littering. That's the problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. That probably was it, to be honest. Yeah. I don't think they, I think they're going, oh, let's go and litter. Because that's the problem with these people is they're so base. <laughs> they go, uh, you know, they don't even think, they don't see there's anything wrong in littering. Because they don't, you know. This is, this is what you get with Costa Coffee customers. To be <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 People in there um, on a Saturday morning go out for a, uh, and they, they, they buy toast, which, <laughs> which is that? about pound fifty, isn't it? It's one pound fifty for two slices of toast. No. Who, who does that? Who my, does that? Who does that? In, in the one in my Tesco, so there's, uh, there's a queue normally out the door of people just ordering, <laughs> like, plain toast. That's wow. back, see, back and to I the general public. A... And the, most of the general public are maniacs. They're, they're, yeah, you know, it's yeah, so yeah. annoying. So annoying. In fact, so Steve, I've got your video on here. So the car registration is, what is it? It's a Citroen. It's a yellow car. Is it a yellow is Citroen car? Yeah, it's a terrible looking car. It's really bright yellow. Yeah. And Steve got it there. It's YR66UHF. So if anyone can, uh, you know, knows it's going to be close to that, and you can just, what they do is just break into the car, empty about six bins of rubbish inside the car, <laughs> lock it up, and see him come out and, and film them. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that. Anyway. <laughs> and um, just for compliance, please don't do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Really don't blame nice. Joe, don't, don't blame Justin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, boys. Uh, anyway, uh, Q1. How, how was how was the portfolio? So, I mean, do you look at? Oh, I'm going to ask you individually. Do you actually look at um, how you perform on a regular basis? Do you have any kind of? Because what I'm doing, yeah. I'm, I'm up- uploading some stuff to the the website. One of them is going to be a uh, spreadsheet where you can monitor your. Uh, basically, just filling the, the the value of your portfolio on a, on a, on, a, on a quarterly basis, and it works out percentage gains, all that for the year. It'll do all that for you. I'm going to put that on the website. But do you look at? Uh, do you bother looking at performance and just check it out? Or do you anything? Yes. Anything spe- what do you do? Yeah, I have like a spreadsheet that I update because Harry and Larry with their uh, with the platform, either on the app or on the website, um, it doesn't. It doesn't give you a true representation of your gains and stuff because it doesn't oh, it's terrible, it doesn't factor in the cells yeah. into your so you, what you're seeing there isn't your true gain on a stock so and especially then obviously you've sold a stock as well and I want to know how well I've done on a stock blah 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 so yeah I have a spreadsheet where I'm keeping a, a running total of my net uh, investment in that stock and then the current price and the gain or loss maybe yeah. um, and then yeah so I keep an idea I saw your video you're about thirty percent up for the year aren't you. Yeah, thirty-four for the quarter. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm about I'm about fifteen percent up. So I'm a little Ooh, bit behind. Why is it, that's because yeah. you didn't deadhead. So, so when you're not deadhead. No, Asian met, yeah, pull pull me down a little bit there. But yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah but when you don't deadhead, Pete, so you, uh, all you, so you're, on. I was just to say, Pete, your system there. Do you have to manually every like say whenever you decide to do it, just put in the figures? Or have you got some sort of automatic? Uh, doing it. I haven't. I haven't progressed to a clever wedding. He's got a lady that does okay. it for him. A little lady uh, yes. from the Philippines. Uh, I, I know you could pull in the data. <laughs> Paddy, you've got a more sophisticated version, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. What are you doing, Pad? Um, Pad's obviously Pad's making Pad's something. Not even listening. No. What are you making, no, I'm Pad? I'm just eating. Oh. I'm eating. Um, there, yeah, I have, but it relies on the Google Finance numbers, which aren't the right numbers. No, okay. Yeah. So, well, well, so, whilst it, it shows me representation of my portfolio, and I. I get excited when I have a, a portfolio, um, when I get a, an all-time high on that number. It's not a real number. Yeah, you know, that, the, the Google show the last last price paid. So if it's a buy, it's quite high, of course, higher than the uh, sell. But, um, you yeah, know, that was, wasn't that from my portfolio management thing? And you uh, you, you added it on to that, didn't you? And, and, uh, no, that, I, I did it all by myself. No, you didn't, did I? <laughs> uh, anyway. When have, when have you ever done a Google Doc? I did. What, what do you mean? Basically, I sent you all the things. Portfolio. In fact, I'm going to do one of those as well because we said over and over again. 
you don't need more than 10 stocks. In fact, if you've got a, a pot less than 30,000, you don't, you don't need more than five stocks. And you probably mm. have a fund in there uh, plus four stocks, maybe, you know, and that's plenty. If you want to, if you want to, if you've got a decent chunk of money, you just want to earn, you know, more than the bank gives you. Fair enough, you can diversify or just put, put in a fund. But if you want to multiply your, your, your portfolio over years and, you know, build up a decent bit of wealth, you've got to really concentrate on less stocks, really, and do some more deep research, have more conviction. And uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload one of those to the website. And in fact, there's two different versions of spreadsheets for management and performance. But do you know what part of me thinks as well? One of the resources on the website I, I, I link to is investing.com. And if you put your watch list on investing.com, they will send you a, a, a notification uh, all the time. Every time one of your stocks rises by more than 5% or falls by more than 5%. Now, if it falls by like 8%, 8% they add adjectives like tanking or, you know, or, and, and I don't, I don't want that because... One of the worst things we have as investors is check the prices too much. And I don't know if it's true, but Buffett says he, you know, he doesn't got a computer in his room. He doesn't have a price monitor in his room. He doesn't even build a checking prices. Doesn't care. And, yeah, you know, because he's a multi-billionaire. So no, no. But the thing is, no, how many times... It, there is the problem of checking prices. If the business is doing well... Don't worry about the day day price, you know. If it's improving, you know, you should you should count it really in quarters at least, but uh, maybe halves in years rather than days. We look at our prices way too much. I do all the time. Yeah. And I think um, monitoring performance is good. It's quarterly. To, I was going to do it on a monthly basis. So no, it's silly. You can't do that because monthly is still quite short term. Quarterly is a bit better, of course, because you, you can see hopefully the business will start to improve over quarters. But um, but like I say, if you look at something like Gfinity, you know, to, to turn any company company around takes a while, you know, and it, it'll get reflected in the stock price, yes. But sometimes you'd have technical things like a seller selling, which has got nothing to do with the business. Generally, it's nothing to do with the business or fund selling, nothing at all. So, you know, why get panicked out of a stock because the share price goes down, you sell it, and then all of a sudden it just shoots up, you know? So I'm just worried. I think, I think monitoring is good because I, I, I looked at that spreadsheet mm. and Argo Blockchain, for example, uh, that video just did yesterday, Three thousand percent. That's done. Yeah. That's, that's uh, so you put a grand in, you'd have had a thirty-three thousand mm-hmm. pound if you'd sold it, say, say yesterday or, or on the first of um, on the thirty-first of uh, March. So uh, yeah, so I've had, I missed out on several baggers, but it's taught me that even and I'm not saying Argo's a trash dock, but I've, I've seen even trash docks that now I realise they're not as good as I thought they were. I've done v- relatively well over time. You know, mm-hmm. time solves a lot of issues, and so, so you're, you're going you're going against the deadheading now. No, 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 no. You've got to have no, 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 no. 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 I'm, I'm you can't have both of these. You can't have both of these things. I can, no, I can because you've got to look you at the, the current filters I have, right? Mm. And I, I've evolved this thing. I'm looking at companies that are going to be generous. Two ways of creating of, 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 of a company getting cash: they're raising by funds or organically via their business. And if a company starts generating real value, and I mean by real value, cash via their operations. That's good. So any stock you should look at should have some kind of roadmap towards profitability. And in fact, I just uploaded a video. Someone on the, on the, on the um, club asked me, he said, I'm never quite sure if a com- when a company needs cash and how far they are away from profitability. And I give three examples in that video um, that I've just uploaded. And you can see, if you are aiming towards companies that are going to be you know, generating cash, they're coming from a loss-making position, that's a very good inflection point because generally the share price has gone down for ages on a lack of bad sentiment because they're loss-making and they've got the end of their tether as far as raising money is concerned. And then all of a sudden they start generating value and the, the, the share price rallies like crazy. You know, the first couple of months of that rallies like crazy. But the, but the stocks that you talk, that you talk about which have um, hurt you, um, Argo, um, Open Orphan, Powerhouse... Well, yeah. yeah, they're all but for the, the strategy. Yeah, but did they? Like yeah. the, the, the the first. Yeah, they're two all there making only, cash. Only, uh, bounced, so, so, only no. bounced this year because of um, the the pandemic. No, no, so no, 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 no. That was something completely out of the. Well, the no, time when you sold no, no. them, it was a it was a it was a fair enough decision to sell them. No, 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 no. no. The pan- I mean, no. If anything. Um, Open Orphan, people think it's a COVID stock. It's not. It's related to vaccines. Vaccines are going to be massively popular over the next few years now. Uh, but uh, they've also do the pr- services they provide, don't they? But um, no, I sort of trusted Cahill more than that. And I just got a bit, um, a bit impatient there. And the guy, I realised... The probably, reason that re-rated was because of the, the pandemic, right? No, he just... He, he just uh, he, he's completely changed he the company. He started, he started putting yeah, about in top line of every RNS. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, no, ma- no, ma- no, maybe maybe it got some more attention because of that because yeah, but, yeah. They, but, they, but again they are heading towards profitability. So that is that is one of the filters. But you know that would have, I mean that would have fitted a filter. It was I mean in that area. I mean that's why I, I, I looked at it. it. They were heading towards cash generation, you know, and profitability. Uh, same as Argo. I mean Argo blockchain because obviously the Bitcoin price went nuts. But like I said on that video, people are talking about Bitcoin being a million bucks. So I mean you can't say they've gone to fifty thousand is beyond what we thought would happen because there's been a regular talk of 100,000 at least. So that was planned in. And I talked about that on the videos thing. I just basically lost a bit of patience. No, I'm talking deadheading companies that were miles off, years off, generating real cash because they just pop and drop. They'll pop on news and drop because they need to raise money. They can't get money elsewhere. It's inevitable. They've got to raise money via, you know, um, via shareholders and that's dilutive. That's not good for the company, you know. So, uh, and I, you know, of course, you if you listen, I made a good chunk of money on stocks like that, but you've got to get out at the right time, you know, as yeah. as as um as you find because it'll just drop. And I don't know what any kind of it. You can't blame the companies. They've got to get money from somewhere. Now if they re- release some news, and the share price has got by 100 percent. Right, we can raise some money now, and that'll keep us going for another six, 12 months. So they've got to do it, otherwise they go skint. So. Now, if that's the kind of company you want to buy, you've got to be on your toes a little bit, you know? You've got to be close to the, your, your broker terminal or your app, getting ready to sort of, oh, hang on, to sell, you know, as soon as you've gone up. So I don't want to be like that. I want, to, I want to have a company where I know pretty much there's a smooth pathway for the next three years to where they're generating real value, you know? That's, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But, but then, like, on the market, for example, is the one that's the only oh. other only other stock for me in Q1 that's performed badly and has eroded some of the portfolio value. Um, so I'm sat now at a slight loss, actually. Yeah, I'm down on that now. Yeah, so, me, me too. But no, it's, that's frustrating. Again, you yeah. know, that's I could easily sell that and think, oh, it's getting my nerves now. Uh, yeah, but, I know, uh, but, but... But it's becoming cheaper and the balance yeah, will be stronger because it's like yeah. less than, what, less than three times revenue now. And um, Jason needs to do some promotion on it, Mr. Yeah. Teb. And uh, he will do it, apparently. Apparently, this this is the month. Uh, quarter one, he wanted to he wanted to buy his time, improve, and they're punching out a lot more on social media. So, yeah, they, they just need to up their, um, you know, have a bit of have a bit of faith for a bit. But uh, I, can't, I, saw, yeah, I, I came very close to selling that this week, I know. and then it went down again, and I was like, oh, I might as well stick with it. Well, no, but you said you keep doing this, right? And you said, oh, I should bought that. And then you look back right. and you get confirmation bias. Right? You look at something that has risen, that you, said, you thought in your head for a, a fleeting moment you're going to buy, and it's gone up. Said, See, I said I was going to buy that. <laughs> but yeah. you can't, but, that, but you, you'll convene, honestly, your mind works in such a way that you'll selectively forget the, the ones where you thought, oh, I'll buy that, and it's gone down. So you should do it. Go with your gut. Be a dirty trader for a quarter and see what happens. I'm not trading. I'm just, I'm just being a bit more decisive. So like the, the, what we spoke about on the podcast last week was trimming down my portfolio. So in order to do that, I have to sell some stuff. So of my, of my portfolio, the stock that I'm least convinced by at the moment is on the market. Why? So because I, the thing that got me interested in them was the sort of no brainer status of them converting some of their agents into higher pay, higher paying rates. And since that, I've sort of understood a bit more about how the market's working, and I'm not sure they're going to be able to do that. Um, Why? And I, because I, I don't think they're that good. Um, if, you, if you're an estate agent and you're heading into a recession, I would have thought you're going to be trying to trim down your expenses. And Zoopla and um, Rightmove are so much further ahead that you'll just go with the easy option and you'll make sure that those are the... But that, those on, how do you know they're with. further ahead? How do you know that? Just down to the, the huge amount of people that use them. But they're not far... Zoopla, I know you have Zoopla, they've got stock levels aren't that different, on, 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 on as different as... Uh, I, mean, I sort of agree, I'm, I'm playing at devil's advocate a little bit because mm. the devil's too busy, so I, I had to come oh, in and stand for his... Uh, hello, I'm the devil's advocate. Um, um, so... Mm. If you look at the growth that's going on, right, and that's what we're talking about. Small cap companies, it's all about growth. They are growing where right move isn't, okay? Now, they are, like, literally, their average price, actually, is, is they're aiming for a third of, of, of right move. But at the moment, they're like 133 is the average price. And right move about 1,000 or just below that. So if you're talking about cutting costs, why wouldn't you have right move and on the market rather than right move and Zoopla? Well, Zoopla is probably double the price of uh, on, the, on the market. Uh, and it's growing, you know? So... 
I, well, I, so I, just, I just think about it, like people in the in the in the positions in these companies that are going to make that decision. People tend people tend not to want to change things radically. They'd like to go with the easy option. If if they have a system that works or a company they've worked with for a long time, they'll tend to stick with that, even if it is a bit more expensive. So if you're if you've got all three and you're using all three then you're going to get rid of the, the new one who hasn't really done very much for you and like it's, it's hard to identify a success with it rather than the one that you've had since you know 20, 2005 or whatever the, since right move started I, I i i just think that the the growth from on the market needs to be considerably more in order to get estate agents happy to to keep to pay more money to use it because if they've got this amount of people on it who are not paying any money at all or are hardly paying any money it's almost like it's a freebie and you don't value that and actually psychologically you may well value right move more even though it's quite a bit more expensive because they're not paying it they're just passing this on to the on to the client okay but let's say what it is. Now, opinion right in fact one up on wall street was about having an opinion on companies or getting a feel of companies from people who you know use it right it's all well and good but a lot of this is your, your surmising in your head. You've got an opinion on it. Now, if you're looking at the stats and the facts, uh, you can go on, like I said, you looked at a, a, a company a website talking about property and some, some, you have some negative comments on there about on the market. You'll get negative comments on all of them, but you can go to on the market's marketing and they've got th- you know, hundreds of um, estate agents who will be saying positive things. Yeah, but there's some very, very small agents. Like no, the but, one you but, posted, but, the one you but, sent her out was like one woman on her own doing, basically renting out her own houses. No, you've got the biggest one. In, I've seen a couple, go, go on their website and you'll see a lot of, lot of video testimonials, one of the biggest in the southeast and all that stuff and they're saying that. But it also... I think the most important thing, it's easy to get carried away with what you think, you know, a fact and opinion, two different things. Everyone's got opinion. Now, the fact is, if you look at their revenues, they are growing. Now, what's more important, right, to a company? Um, shareholders' opinion of what they mm. think is going on, or actually the financial results, which shows them growing. And, you know, so it's up to you. I mean, it's up to you. If you're not happy with the company, I think, you're I think growth, sell it. growth is relative, though, isn't it? If you're starting from a very small base, then mm-hmm. you can always say that you're growing. Yeah, whether yeah, actually, yeah, you're no, actually you, yes, no, but they go, hang on, 23, 23 million in, in, in revenue is, is uh, for, a, for a company that's, I don't know, 70 million, is, is you know, quite significant. Now, they're growing that 20% click each year. That's, that's significant. It's not a small base. Uh, when you talk mm. about it, you say, okay, a couple of hundred thousand to a million, yes. But they're not, they're, they're doing over 23 million. So that's a, a decent chunk of revenue for a company. So I'm just thinking, hang on, let's see what... The, if they start, if they, if they stop now and the, 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 the growth figures go down, I'm out. I'm out. I've got no... I, you know, I don't care what they're saying about, uh, oh, but we've got, we got done deals with these people and this. Thing. If your revenues and your figures are going down, I'm out because that's not good. What, what I don't understand with them is the recent price action. I don't understand why it's doing what it's doing. Unless all the, a lot of the investors are thinking the way Paddy's thinking, and that's... Yeah, and it doesn't take a lot to sort of sway it. Yeah. But, um, you know, but what, if they come out, I mean, they're going to come up with some uh, their, their figures soon. But we know yeah. the figures. They're a trading update, and we know their figures anyway. Um, let me just find it. But is there something that I'm missing? Like the uh, the stamp duty thing's been extended and things like that, and everyone's coming out of lockdown and stuff. So you kind of think... and. The economy, yes, of course, has taken a hit with everything, but the house house property prices are at all-time highs, I believe, in places. And so I don't quite, you know, it doesn't seem to correlate for me. It doesn't seem to link up with why that, why they've seen such a dip in their share price. Yeah, uh, you would expect it to just be, if nothing else, treading water, just staying yeah, where but, it is. And it was like, no, no, but you, you won't do, because as I'm saying, I think what a lot of issue is, when you get companies, um, agents coming on free paying, con- uh, on full paying contracts, they get issue of equity, right? There's not a lot of, the the the, rev- the, 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 the turnover um, or the, the volume in on the market is not high, it's an illiquid stock. So if you've got nothing going on, apart from a couple of sellers every day, it will start to make, you know, make the, the market yeah. tip over and start falling down, or if the sellers outweigh the buyers, but of course. The business itself right now is in a better position than it was three months ago, and it was trading at £1.30 or whatever, and then it's now trading at 85p or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, that's why, that's the confusion, but that's what you get with a lot of stocks, isn't it? But that, and that's the frustration for a lot of uh, private investors, because the temptation now is to, oh, well, yeah, throw that in. They, 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 yeah, they, they basically, um, they, 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 their average volume is less than... 30 35,000 pounds a day, you know, and that's not a lot for 35,000 pounds, yeah, a day. That's all the volume is on the on the and on on the last day trade, they did 18,000 shares, 
Uh, so that's 90 pence times 80, or 19,000 shares of 90 pence. So that's so any volume. Now, what, oh. what, what, what one thing is here, this is very interesting, right, Pad? Because when you see something negative happening with a share price, you almost look for negative things. People will do this. It's confirmation bias, you know? And that can happen. And that's and as a, if, as one of the reasons why you shouldn't sell is because the share price is moving against where you think it's going. Yeah. Because if the business is improving, it's worth having patience. Because, you know, there's so, so many charts where you say, oh, I'm getting out of this. It's, dri it's dribbled down. All of a sudden, it just goes berserk because they've done the, the last update, right? I mean, uh, they're doing 23 million in revenue. La uh, the, and la the year before that was 18. That's decent growth, you know, for a small... Uh, the first time they were profitable, 2.3 million operating profit, loss that year before of 9.2 million. They're mm. at an inflection point where something's going right. All I'm saying is, give it a bit of time, we've got a change of a CEO, he's got to prove himself. Um, if the growth doesn't come, you know, if we get half your results or training update and the see growth has been down, I said, do you know what? I'm... I don't know what's happening here. It may be a strategy, a long-term strategy is uh, to, to, to you know, sacrifice a bit of growth now to achieve longer-term, deeper sort of uh, relationships. But I'm not happy with that. I'm getting out because I'm there for the growth. So that's it. That's all I'm going to go with. I'm gonna go, next set of figures, when they come out, I don't know, but um, they need to be... Uh, when are they releasing it? Uh, I don't know. It's going to be soon. They're going to release their, their figures soon and they do some... They, they haven't done anything. It's a trouble. He hasn't done any apart from the Glanty uh, option. They haven't done any promotion yeah. around it at all. They need to come out and start talking and tell us what's happening. But, um, so. Like my amateur chart reader skills, I'd say there's a sort of support level around here, and the RSI is suggesting that it is oversold. It's down at like uh, forty, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, cause, so cause, if, cause, if we if we were coming to the stock for the first time now, seeing it for the first time, we'd start we look at this and go, oh, that's quite interesting." I think. Yeah, that, and that's it. You know, I mean, yeah, maybe we can be a bit biased. If, yeah. if, the, if the share price was rallying, right, we'd be talking yeah. about the positive things on it. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, and, uh, it's, it's, we'd be talking about, it, "Oh, we should have bought in at eighty-five p." Yeah, yeah. You know? so, but um, we also, I think, we'd, we'd we'd like to work. We'd like to work. We'd like to. Um, own companies where it's clear that the management have a really good strategy and understand their product and um, have a plan to to make it better and 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 use that to make more money. And with this guy, we just don't know yet. And we are yeah, yeah. we are hoping that he's able to convert some of these free clients into paying clients or get more out of the ones that he's already got. We're not seeing apart from the Glanty thing. We're not seeing very much. Um, talk. So I guess as soon as they start talking, then that will help reassure us. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. No, I, it's I, I, tough I, when a company just releases nothing and you, you hear nothing for a few months because yeah. your mind fills in the gaps, isn't it? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Do you know what? That's why, you know, my last lesson on, on, on in investing there on the, on the website was um, psychology, market psychology. You know, yeah. it's, your, your mind is, 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 the, is the thing. It can mess you up. And, and, and you know, if you can remove emotion, and you can be a genius at investing, but the thing is, we are emotional beings, and especially when you've got money involved, that is it. You know, you yeah. are in the game. So, but you've got to know right now. What's so? So, what's going to support on the market? First of all, I think fundamentals are good. The valuation alone, we don't need to. You know, we don't need to talk about it or, or promote it or anyway. If they're undervalued in some way and they're yeah. growing, the share price will reflect that. Honestly, it will happen. <laughs> Thanks for that. That's good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that, that a nice little full stop to that little uh, thing there. So, uh, you know, I said, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is the issue I've had in the past. I've just, you know, I've yeah. started worrying about the share price of something. Yeah, because if you look at it, right, it, yeah, okay, it rallied, it, a momentum picked up, the, and it went up to 140, it's now down to 90 pence. But you know what? It's flattening out a little bit, and, and um, I'm not too worried. It's oversold. When it gets oversold, it ten, tends to have a bounce. And if anything, sell at the top, you know. So it, yeah. cause it will bounce. We know share prices have gotten down. It's not a grind lower and lower. They've got plenty of cash. They seem to be improving. It'll have a nice bouncing really rally. They need to sort out the website, though, don't they? They need to sort out this bedroom situation. Yeah. 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 Uh, the I filtering. Quite, I quite yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't you know, it's, it's, it, well, see, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm frustrated with it sometimes. Of course I am. I'm thinking, do you know what? I haven't got any spare cash in the portfolio. When I'm looking around, I'm looking at bigger stocks to top slice. Thinking, I got some uh, you know micro cap ideas that I know could rally very strongly, but I'm going to wait till the next set of figures. At least it's going to be soon. Well, when, when was the last thing they reported? Because um, because they had the end of years in the, the post year trading update on the, on the in February. They've got to be doing something now, surely. Unless Jason's just really shy. So Jason, you've got to speak to people. I don't like to. I don't like to speak to people. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it all from my bedroom. Jason, come on out. 
No! Send, Jason, just send an email. Like, yeah, if you yeah. don't want to talk, it's fine. Just send an email. Yeah. Maybe he's got his bedroom door locked. He just want to come out and then do not yeah. disturb on there, working in like, that it, hard. Like, what we want is an RNS which addresses this crazy bedroom situation. They're, gonna, <laughs> they're now going to update the app so that you can select minimum as well as maximum. Yes, bedrooms. that's it. Like every other pr- property portal, just, yes. Yeah. Because we, yeah, that, that we, would be my one reason for not using them if I was buying a house. Yeah, we haven't heard... I don't know why I'm talking down a stock I own. No, 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 it's just good. Do you know what? Great. That's very healthy, though, because, I mean, we're questioning you're a shareholder in a business. And, and that's the thing. We've got to think of this. I'm a shareholder in a business. There's a new guy there. We haven't really heard from him. He does stuff on Twitter and, and, and all that stuff and social media. But I want to hear him talking. You know, I want to see the, the, the whites of his eyes. I want to just say... Let's what, go to the AGM and, you know, pitch in a question about the bedroom thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why have they done that? I just don't understand why they've done that. What do you mean? They told you why they done it. I told you why they did it because it gives you a better option, isn't it? So well, what's it? I, do you know? It's, it's so irrelevant now. I forgot what it is. So basically, when you're searching for a, a house, right? You guys are oddballs, though. You're oh, anomalies. Yeah. I've said that. You are guys who now should be settled down, and married with kids, but you're not. You're all single. Well, uh, so when you yeah. look for a house, you look at the same kind of thing: one bedroom, bed sit. <laughs> Uh, so but what I'm looking for, for the majority of the population look for houses they look for bigger houses because they're, they're growing families so I will look for I will put my price in that's the most important thing on the, on the app the price is the most important thing where I want to search the house second most important thing bedrooms the most mo- important thing but also if I can get a just, four bed for the price of a three bed I want to look at it yeah, you, you right. can do that in right move yeah. Justin you can, you can do exactly what you just described yeah and Justin, you're you're doing that. You're co- coming from your perspective. How about uh, a couple whose kids have all flown the nest and they're downsizing? So they, yeah. they want. But you to go, look. Yeah. yeah, no, I understand that. It's going to be for everyone. But, but, they, but want, they want three bedrooms. They don't want four, or they want two or three, yes. or four or five. But the, and they can't do that on that app. But so the, it, you're. No, your, your argument falls down. Well, it's nothing to do with Jason, really frustrating. Jason's on Twitter, right? He likes Twitter. So if you uh, if you uh, you know ask him a question right. on there, ask. say hello, Jason, on the app. Um, I don't want more than one bedroom. I like I want a bedsit studio diner. That's what I like. I like having my my little um, <laughs> my little cooking stove right next to my bed. Um, you know, I like the toilet right next to my bed as well. I don't right. want an extra bedroom, but on your app, I can't get less than one bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just say go to right move. <laughs> yeah, 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 get a right move there, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, anyway. Yeah. The thing is, they, this is the thing. We've spent too long on this, but it's a disruptor. Are they disrupting or are they just doing the same thing? If they're not yeah. disrupting, uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. Presumably, that- the, the only disruption there, I mean, as the website goes, they're not really disrupting. It's exactly the same. So their disruption is that they're part owned by estate agents. So that's, that's their, their, you know, in terms of their business model, that's the only thing that they've got that's interesting or new. So they should be making more of that. And like you said well, a few no, times, well, they should be making mo- the most of the exclusive thing. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, their yeah, actual... Yeah. No, I, I, but I believe that. But just Jason did say, you know, um, they are looking to uh, you know, deepen that relationship with consumers and, um, and with agents, you know, and uh, help them out. And he, he said, if, if you look at him on Twitter, he's very much for tell us what you want. You know, I'm here listening. I, I want to make it the best for the consumers and for the agents as well. So if he is doing that and he's making the best product... I'm sure someone will say to him, Jason, this bedroom plus feature. So, um, you know, I'm sure that will, that will stand out, you know, so... Uh, That's really obvious, yeah. Oh, why, why, have you... that? why haven't we done that before? Um, it'd be brilliant if they made that change and the share price rallied to, like, two quid. Mm. And the three of us would be like, Finally. see, Justin, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I yeah. would love it if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's by uh, Kevin Keegan. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, right. Uh, quick reminder, uh, if you haven't got your ISA sorted out, Stockton Shares ISA, you know, your deadline's coming up. Get it sorted. So, uh, and also junior ISAs. I no, didn't even... no, you're knackered now, aren't you? Because uh, the market's closed until the new financial year. Is it? No. When are we, uh, when are we back in the market? When are we... No, Tuesday's the 6th, isn't it? That's the new financial year. Is it? <laughs> you, you, can still put, you can still put money into the ISAs, though. You can put the money into the ISAs. Have you you can still, have oh, I, but can you, can you just, you can also, can you open uh, okay, online? Sorry, yeah. uh, open online. <laughs> you still open online, can you? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. They're clo- they're clo- oh, no, you can open online and add the funds. But no, but won't it transact that it'll process on the next working day, won't it? I don't oh, know. I don't know. I have no, no idea. No, my, I, I added some this week. I, I scraped together some pennies from around the back of the sofa and stuck them in. And yeah, it's in. It's, it's done. 
Yeah, I was yeah. during a working day. Like we've had, we've got bank holiday in the weekend now. Will it go through? Okay, whatever. It might do. What's the sense of this, right? So uh, I was going to do it. Seventy-two. Uh, no, I was going to do a junior ISA, right, for the kids. You could put nine grand into those, by the way, oh, each yeah. financial year. So I was, I was looking into that because I've not done it before, and uh, I, I looked at it. I said Barclays. So I Google search. What was? Tell me the sense of this. I Google search Barclays junior ISA. Big article there, but we're walking the dog, and uh, I thought, right, we'll get, get on to this quickly, because the financial year is ending, because Megan's now said the money she saved, she wants me to invest, even though I've shouted at her every day for the last three years, saying, we should invest this money, not just put it in a bank account. Anyway, um, so I'm looking, and so we call, Megan calls Barclays, we get back, and says, oh, we, uh, there's a whole sort of section on it, you know, but junior ISA, call Barclays, so we, I, don't, uh, I don't think we do that product. Is you, you don't do that product, what do you mean? We just read about it on your website. You no, know, I think there's information on the website. We don't do the product, though. <laughs> I thought, what, what's the point, then? There's a big login button. I thought, what's the point, actually? They don't, uh, they just want traffic, you know? They just want to give information about it when they don't have the product. Don't tell me about... I wouldn't go into... I wouldn't say, you know, I, I go into a Lamborghini guy and say, well, we don't sell Lamborghinis, actually. We just, you know, got that picture outside because it's a nice Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what's the point, you know? Anyway, so that's annoying. So I have to go with... I think I have to go with Harry and Larry. You know, oh, Ooh, lovely. Because Harry, Harry, like you get, get, get them young. They never change yeah. over. See, get them yeah. young, get off them sweets and stuff. You know, yeah. do you want to see puppies? We'll yeah. give you a free puppy if you set up a junior stocks and shares ISA. We'll give you a free puppy and sweets for mm. all your life. I'd love to get Harry and Larry on this show one week. And someone said that actually. <laughs> someone said that. Do you see the funny thing? It was ironically. Harry and Larry, the guys who own Hargreaves Landscape, are called Pete and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no. They are, yeah, yeah, they are oh, called yeah, Pete and yeah, Steve. Yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, sure. yeah someone's uh, on the chat groups. I found it hilarious that they're called Pete and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What, 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 what? I, was, I was considering the money I put in the, into my new ISO, so I hadn't put any in this year up until now. I was considering opening one with another company just so that I could slowly sort of like move over to another company. But in the end, I just I couldn't be asked. Um, um, yeah, and they, so they've got me. And they charge I, you as well. They I, I charge you they've, missed the, they've missed the trick there, really, haven't they? They should have called themselves Pete and Steve. Much, much more ring yeah. to the company. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I tell you what, there isn't that in Hargreaves Lansdowne. Pete and Steve. <laughs> who, <laughs> who would you put your money with? <laughs> Hargreaves Lansdowne or Pete and Steve? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can see why I, they I went like. with. I can see why they went with Hargreaves Lansdowne. To be honest, guys. Yeah. Pete and Steve. Mm, no, but okay. Pete and Steve are reliable guys, and they Pete and Steve. Yeah. You can't rely on a Steve. Well, I was not, on a Pete. not if you want to sell stairs. Stairs. What? Stairs. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 stairs. What? Sh- stairs. That's yeah, that, not that, if you want to sell something. Yeah, that sell was Steve's stuff. idea going into stairs, and Pete said, "No, do shares. It's more profitable." <laughs> was it? Yeah, really? Yeah. Be... I thought you said stairs. When we start this business up, I was talking about stairs, not shares. I know nothing about shares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter. No one knows anything about shares. That's why we can make do well. Yeah. I told him about that, right? See, you know, do you see that woman? I think it's a bit of a disgrace, really. But she's created lots of jobs. And I said yeah. on Twitter, I said one of the, you know, there's a lot of money to be made in gambling, but not if you're gambling. And that lady, what's her name? Denise Coates, CB. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Like she, she earned a salary of four hundred million pounds a year. Yeah, four hundred twenty-one million, right? In in in, in wages and four. 48 quid in divi- 48 million, sorry, dividends, 469 million a year. And I'm thinking, part of me says that's disgusting. You don't need that much money, you know? But then someone pointed out, this, I, I just tweeted that. I got all these people arguing, saying, the disgusting, this is a capitalist society, this is what's wrong with it, and all that. I had loads of those come out to me, and I just ignored it. But one, said, one person said, well, listen, actually, I live in that area, and everyone I know knows someone who works there at Bet365. Yeah. Mm. Um, so if you work at Bet365, you know they, they pay a lot of tax by those people working and all that, create a lot of jobs, create a lot of wealth. Yeah. So but they should know. also pay their staff more. Yeah, no, exactly. Why didn't she, 40, but she doesn't need forty million in dividends? Just no. give it the staff as dividends as bonuses, isn't it? You know, why do yeah. you need that? You don't need. Let us be honest. No one needs that much in a lifetime anyway. Four hundred and twenty million. Well, unless she's buying a yacht. <laughs> yeah. was, every yacht in the, in there, the is, there is something warped though. people get so rich this is what their minds that guy Gupta owns that steel factory that's going through and he wanted a loan from he wants a loan from the British government and uh, he's saying we need it otherwise you know I'll, 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 it could go through and all that at the, at the moment he's buying a £42 million house you know what yeah, yeah. you want a loan yeah, from the taxpayer yeah. you've got companies all around the world and you're buying a house of £42 million, and you're asking for a loan. I thought, what is wrong with you? Put your hand in your... I, I, I do annoys me, put it like that. Put your hand in your pocket, that woman, Denise Coates. Love, mm. 
Why not just give apparently that dividends? I'm just reading up on her. Apparently, she does. Uh, she pays all her tax in the UK, which yeah. is probably a good but, thing. And, and um, her, her recent, uh, the year, recent years have all been like two, three hundred million. She's her annual salaries are insane every year. It's yeah. like wow. She's been one of the highest, and because it's a private company. Uh, yeah, yeah. They don't have to show it. Guess, you know, yeah. it's like they own the company, don't they? So, yeah. like, where else would the money go? But yeah. she's perfectly entitled to take it, and she has a salary. So, yeah. but I just think, I just think ethically, I wouldn't. Oh you know? yeah, of course. I, it was that the guys because it's, it's a music business who are very ethically spot on. They give all. I can't think of what the business is. It, it, it sells, uh, I think, musical instruments, but it's a national company. But they literally share their profits all every year, and they give them bonuses. And, and um, so like these are often on wake up to money and it's like one of these guys who said, and they've done really well as well because of it he said you know you, we, we value you and people want to work for us people actually want to you know they, they, they want to come and work for us and uh, and they think that it's, yeah it's it's like legal in general do that as well don't they do they oh, yeah, yeah they, they massively uh, pay out uh, a lot of the company's profits to the staff yeah no sounds it's something like something sounds it's uh, they do um, in car audio Richard sounds Richard Sound, yeah, something like that. They're really... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he, he just gave the company to, yeah, to the you, staff when he retired, yeah. That's right. Richard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just think, why not do that? That's, yeah, that, that, yeah. Would, that would shut every person, every lefty up, you know, who oh, capitalism doesn't work. But it works a lot better than communism, you know? And uh, if people like that just gave back... Does it, though? Yes! Paddy the shareholder. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, no, no, but the yeah, thing is, yeah. people mess it up, don't they? It's like, you know, people mess it up, you know, you, you always get wrong ones wherever you are. You know, there's wrong ones, in, you know, socialists and capitalists and communists. But I mean... Yeah, it's you, just greed though, isn't it? Like, yeah, exactly. When, that's, when that's, the greed that's, that's to- that's overtakes it. any sort of uh, common sense, that's when there's a problem. Yeah, not exactly. Yeah. I just feel like it's, it's extreme, like the markets, you know, fear and greed. And and, yeah. um, and uh, she doesn't need that money. She could share that out and she could make, you know, in, in fact, employ a lot more people... Uh, you know, and and uh, in, uh, they, they do, I mean, she does do uh, charitable foundations and all this sort of stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's lots of good stuff that's going on. So, we, but the, the you know the headlines uh, that's not doesn't make great headlines. The headline of 400 million quid sal- salary. Yeah, exactly. But why you, let's be honest. Let's, 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 if you said to her, Denise, we're going to have a cap on your uh, on your money, 10 million a year. So now it's a massive reduction from 421. But are you going to spend 10 million quid a year, considering she hasn't? Probably, you know, she hasn't got. She's got about probably six houses with no mortgages on anyway. She hasn't got bills coming in, is she? So t- t- even ten million, you could give the other three hundred and seventy million or yeah. to other people or something. You know, charities, anything. I just think, well, you don't need that. That's the whole yeah. point of capitalism. You can, so many people can benefit. You know, yeah. so many people can, but they, they have yeah, already. It's starting yes. to sound a little bit like Jeremy Corbyn here. I've got to be honest. This was uh, like, Jeremy Corbyn. No, he didn't. <laughs> remember him. <laughs> Um, can I just can I just clarify uh, that Pete is wealthier than Steve? Pete is worth two point four billion. Steve is a, a mere one point seven billion net worth. How is that? Are they not a fifty fifty then? That's weird, isn't it? I know, but they've got loads of other investments. Like uh, your, Steve is a he's a shareholder of uh, or owner rather of uh, Bristol City Football Club oh, and okay. oh, Bristol Rugby. Yeah, whereas uh, Pete, I don't know what Pete does. I think Pete just uh, screws his money away. I can imagine think... this being like a, a game in, um, what's the yeah. Eddie Murphy film? Trading Places. Like, <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen those two now. Yeah, yeah exactly. I know. Do you know what? I, I bet... Um, I bet... Pete ramps Steve into crap stocks. <laughs> says, hey, Steve, I've got, I've got a tip for you. Buy this stock yeah. now, right? And then Steve buys it and they've got a massive place in it. Oh, did you buy that? I haven't bought any. No, I'm just messing around. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? I'm, I'm richer than you now, aren't I? Yeah. And, so, and Steve just holds on to stocks forever, and, like holds on to football clubs forever, and they die. <laughs> yeah. And he's just holding, no, I'm not selling Bristol City. I'm going to hold on to Bristol City. They're going to be Premier League one day. And, uh, and they keep going down and down. Yeah. Never happens. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, G Finity, uh, again, you know, it's, it's annoying. I, I genuinely think G Finity, right? Because the technical issues of G Finity, we've got sellers and, and, um, and Warren holders selling and all that stuff. It, that will be over before October, pretty much, because of course people will, will exercise their warrants before October and sell if they want to sell or hold on. Um, but it, it won't be a problem. But do you see that guy who's um, Charles Street Holdings? That's phenomenal. He's a, he's, I, I, that's the kind of guy I like, you know. And he invests in small um, tech companies, and um, no one knows him basically. He's a guy called Robert Keith, low profile tech investor. He founded EDOS, you know, Lara Croft is EDOS, you know, came from that. And he also... Sorry, what? Charles Street is like a, like a company name, is it? It's Charles Street is a company, yeah, but his, it's his company. So he's an investor, it's called Charles Street Holdings, yeah? They right. own 28% now, Gfinity, after they've exercised their warrants. He won't sell them either. 
So we know they're not going to flip. Uh, it's owned by Robert Keith because he, he, he launched EDOS, which was massive. Do you remember Lara Croft was massive? One of the first big games that went crazy, didn't it? For and uh, became, so he, he's, he's obviously sold that. And then he start, most entrepreneurs are one-hit wonders, you know. Then he started another company called Fast Search and Transfer, and that was bought by Microsoft for 1.2 billion. Mm, and, and so, hard. so he's got, a, a, and he founded that. So he's got a, a decent chunk in Divinity. And I like that. If you search for him, you won't find this picture of him. Is Robert Keith? His name is. But um, oh, yeah, we've talked about this before, and you, you, you yeah. still haven't found a picture of him. No, oh. you won't. You won't. It's like it's really oh. under the cover. I, I spoke to a broker who obviously <laughs> operates through. In fact, one of the brokers who were for Gfinity. And he said, "No, you won't find anything on him. Hardly anything on him, really." Um, it, it, but by his nature, he invests in a lot of companies, tech startups that fail, but uh, doesn't bother him. You know, and um, but yeah, I, I, I think Gfinity is going in the right direction. You know? And listen, what happens is, I think towards the end of the year, we'll have. No selling, buying, um, and I think it'll re-rate. And it's one of those things where it's very frustrating because it'll get six pence, six pence come back yeah. down to three point eight pence, which is so annoying as a long-term holder. But I mean, so, but can yeah. I ask what's your uh, strategy on that in terms of what are you thinking longer term? So riding out the the bumps and whatever you've got your holding. Are you thinking? Have you got a target price? Are you thinking you're just hold? If the story doesn't change and it continues to get better over the next few years, are you just going to hold and hold and hold and maybe yeah. top slice uh, a little bit at some point? Yeah, but but I'm, gonna, I'm just looking at a picture of. I've Paddy, just sent you a picture of a picture of, of, of Robert <laughs> Keith apparently. Is that him? <laughs> That's him, yeah. It took, uh, it, it took me literally three seconds to how find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're on Shutterstock. Where? You own Shutterstock. No, he's got... Look at that. He's, oh, he, oh, it could he be is, him because yeah. he's standing next to a big house. Um, That's like Jeremy Corbyn, isn't it? He's like, he's, a, he's, a, he's like Jeremy Coy. He's, he's smart. Friendly. He's a smart guy. He's got lovely cars. He's got yeah, lovely it's cars. A yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cat, uh, Jaguar servant and his Suffolk home. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah, that, that's, um, that took about two seconds. Well done, uh, Pat. You won't find him. You did will you, not but, find but, him. But, but, did, you, did, but you, wait, did you go on Shutterstock for that? Or just go on Google? Just Google. Bro, that <laughs> picture cost £159 to buy. I know, if you want to buy that picture, editorial single image, 159 quid. It's got, You're going so, to, aren't you, Justin? So you can put it on it's your got wall. Shutterstock all over it. Um, there we are. I could Photoshop that out if you want. That's a Ferrari <laughs> standing next to there, isn't it? Or, La, or, or Maserati. And he's a, his classic car behind. A big hat. So, yeah. So, um, but he's one of the holders there, which I quite like. Um, no, I'm going to hold on to G. I, I think I genuinely, it's improving. I think it'll be, John knows what he's doing. And he did say in the last podcast, if you listen to it, we're more a digital media c- a publisher now is going to be. So there'll be service providers, of course, of eSports, but there'll be more on the digital um, media side, which I'm glad because the margins on that are like 60, 70%. Uh, and the margins of other stuff and not as big as twenty percent from that, so it brings the the the, the, com, the, the blended average of the margins about thirty percent. But does, if they get the digital um, what's some site, digital media side up and running, like I said, a flywheel building up momentum all the time, that will be generating lots of cash. And um, is is he's aiming like I said, his role model business wise is Future PLC, which is a, dig, a media company, and it's worth one five five billion. And uh, oh, he's got a little uh, dog there, investor Robert. He's also got um, billiards, I think. Is that billiards yeah. or snooker? That's a nice house, house, isn't it? Do you know what? I've, that just, is I've, I've just found all his holiday snaps as well online, so I'll send them over. That's, that is, <laughs> no, no, that is one. Um, that is one um, session, isn't it? Because it's all around his house. Mm. Tennis one, courts. One photo session. Got gra- grass and um, hard surface court. So do, can, do you know what? I, th- I think we just better stop this because the fact that he's quite a low profile tech. In- Have you seen his pool? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's got a little greyhound in the corner. Uh, but, but, is that real listen, or is that a statue? Listen now, listen now. He's a low, you know, oh, he's profile. A, profile tech investor <laughs> yeah. and we are looking at his, through all his photographs on a podcast <laughs> talking, <laughs> and talking but about it's them. online. It's not like we've hacked his Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, well, that's, what does that photo shoot be for? Sounds like it's for some one of these country life magazines or something, you know? It looks like one of those things, you know? But, um, yeah. But no, I, I genuinely think, um, have a bit of patience. It's going to be a bit volatile this year. This is a transition year. If you hold on this year, I think we'll just be laughing next year, honestly. It'll be one of these uh, star companies, eSports, a British company doing very well in eSports, and um, and I think it'll do very well. Uh, I quite like it. Uh, yeah, I see the future there. It's a very good future. Um, <laughs> what's annoying, though, is I talk about uh, this star company just worth holding on to. And I said, you know, I didn't say that last week. Paddy said, I said, it's a five-bagger nailed on. I didn't say that. What I said is, I can't see any wow. other company with a clear route to five-bagger stardom, bagger uh, five-bagger ship, as right. Escape Hunt. 
because they, they've got a plan to open 50 sites on a valuation of 3 million per site. And in fact... You said you said it's as close to a nailed-on five bagger as I can get. Yeah, 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 exactly, because there's nothing nailed on in the world of investing. But um, but you may get frustrated because Stewie, Stewie Seller, Seller Stewie, mm. is a bit, I don't understand why Stewie's selling because he's made a bit of profit, um, of course. He had 3.3 million on the 16th. He's obviously a late reporter. He tends to report late on his sales. So he, he went down to 3.3 million on the 16th. Didn't report that the 29th. Apparently he's around about three days he's supposed to report within. So he's leaving that very late. He, so it's been selling going on again. I think the share price is holding up very high. We hit high, th- hit 33 pence. That's a 70 month high with his selling. With his mm. selling, is hitting that. So that shows you his buyers there, right? So I think when he clears, and he is probably below 3% right now, the reopening of the economy, the sentiment towards that, we've got a month, well, we're into April now. By the 17th of this month, we have a month left so they can reopen properly. I think this will fly. I'm glad Stewie's going to be out before we get this positive running because it'll, it'll fly and Stewie the seller will be out. And, uh, but you have to say he's actually played a blinder because he, he was buying in at like five or six B and sold at what twelve or something. Got into the placing. He's at a dirty 16. trader. That's what he is. Well, yeah, all right, but you you uh, you know he has played it well because he's he's like I said, got out of twelve P ish, wasn't it? And then well, not, I mean reduced his holiday. He has, he's never been completely out, has he? What he was selling down before that and whinging and selling. Yeah, okay, okay, and then the place and took part in the place and then dumped his stock again. You no, ought to have a bit of loyalty to a business, yeah? Who's yeah, okay, done very but, well, you've done very well by. Okay, but you, you, yeah, you, you have, you know, <laughs> you're frustrated for a different reason. But um, what was the placing at? 15, 16p or something, wasn't it? 18p or I can't remember what it was. It was something like that. Yeah. And he's now selling in thir- at 30p. You know, he's like, he's trading it, sure, but he's done made, very well. Doubled his money. Doubled, he's done very well. Twice he's doubled his money, you know, so he's done very well. Yes, so, he uh, has, and I hate him. Okay. What else, Shui? Dirty trader Stewie. Let's just hope he gets that five bag when he's out so he sees what he misses. Yes. He could have had. He could <laughs> have had. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. He, no, to be fair, he's, he's, he's in a, a decent chunk, and you can't. And, see, see, and that's the thing, you know. Look, the business is improving, right? Whenever I, I get this question, in fact, what I've got now is, is a stock answer on my notes pad about when people ask me about pe- people sell and the fund sell. I said, oh, oh, something's wrong, fund selling. So there's a stock answer there, and I, I basically says that. Listen, in, in, in my experience, ninety in the high 90s 99% of the time someone sells or a fund sells it's got nothing to do with the business they're selling it's generally that they're either reallocating the stock there's personal reasons even even directors can sell to you know for tax reasons uh, to buy a house to buy anything for, for money for divorce which I know someone did recently uh, a CEO of a thing so it, it, when, when, a, when a director buys there's is one reason they're buying is because they can get money out of it. When they're selling, there's many different reasons. And generally, they can't sell because something's wrong with the company because that means they know there's something wrong with the company. That's inside information. They can be arrested for that. You know, So don't read anything into anyone selling 99.9% of the time. It's because... They just it's a personal thing. It's to do with the investment company. So investment you know, houses have different managers all the time. And then if a company goes down below, below a certain market cap, they'll say, we're not going to invest in companies below 50 million. We have got no liquidity. We can't buy and sell. So they just sell. They just dump. They don't care if they make a loss. They have old thousands of companies. They don't care if they make a loss on one company. So yeah, don't worry about you know, someone selling because Stewie, he's made decent money. Fair play. Yeah. You know, he's, he, he, if he wants to sell and take some profit, let him take him right. I mean, he's got a, well, he must have made a million or so, hasn't he? A decent couple of million, maybe. So yeah. um, maybe he'll just hold half a million in there or whatever. I don't know. But it's up to him, isn't it, what he does? Uh, he's de risking. Maybe, maybe he just wants to buy a house like, uh, you know, Robert Keith. Who knows? Hmm. There you go. I don't think he'd afford that, actually, because that house looks amazing. But, uh, maybe he just wants to buy a house. <laughs> okay. Maybe he just wants to buy a house. Uh, anything else worth talking about? Stocks and shares? Um, uh, mm-hmm. uh, a wave. Uh, <laughs> oh. No, not much else going on. There was something I forgot. Uh, 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 on the market, uh, I own track was today. Oh, Truefin is um, had a little rally, a little bit there. I'm, I'm waiting for that to. I think it's going to go do very well soon. Truefin, I really do. They're keeping quiet about it, but Truefin, I think, will do very well. It'll come down yeah. to being one company, probably two companies, maybe maximum. No one, and, and uh, they'll sell a lot, the rest of cash. Maybe return that to investors. Um, but yeah, I think it'll do well. I quite like that. I'm hoping for, to get um, cause someone asked me. He said, "Can you get the CEO on?" Hopefully soon. Yes, I think April is the is the, is the month he's coming on. So hopefully we get him on. But uh, again, I think that could be a it'd be interesting to see if they announce the Lloyd's thing or the Mortal Shell Two thing. It'll it'll make the share price move like crazy. 
Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Let's uh, hope so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Y- uh, y- yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, let's get a TV recommendation. I've gone to Louis through, Steve. I- I- I've actually exhausted. In fact, you know what I've done? I've actually exhausted Net- Netflix pretty much. BBC have exhausted. But um, well, I'm on the treadmill in the morning. But um, what I've gone to now, my son, right, Fred, has been, he gets everything from TikTok. Everything, all his facts, everything from TikTok, right? <laughs> and he's been, facts. someone on these followers has been talking about Peaky Blinders. And I tried no. Peaky Blinders previously. And mm-hmm. I thought it was a bit pantomime, and I watched it a bit. I didn't really get into it. Uh, so I said, listen, he started watching it anyway. Can I watch it? I didn't really think it was that bad. And so he started watching it. I said, oh, I better watch it. So I put it on the treadmill. I thought, I'll monitor it, because he, he watched the first episode. He says, it's very good, Dad. It's very good. And um, I started watching it. I thought, what? It's like shootings in the heads. It's like <laughs> sex. There's everything in it. I said, well, no, 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 Fred. And he, he, he's been moving moodle me for days. He said, I'm old enough. I know what goes on. He doesn't know what goes on. He didn't, he, you know, there's, there's, there's a scene in there where... How old is he? He's um, six. No, no, he's, no, he's, he's, he's 11. Uh, That's he's, all right. I think it's 15, yeah. But there's a scene in there, Steve, right? Where the sister is having sex with another guy in a bed, and they're just rocking her. He, and he, afterwards, I was just talking about sex and stuff, and he, he said, oh, that's what Austin was doing. Some Shelby, the, 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 so he didn't know what they were doing. It just, so, so, she was sitting on top of him, just rocking back and forth for a laugh. <laughs> I thought, what do you think they were doing that bed there? But um, no, I'm, I'm into the second episode of uh, Piggy Blunders now. I know it's old, and people say you. I watched it years ago, and I'm getting into it actually because the thing is, I've watched a lot of episodes recently, and um, acting is quite bad. But as long as the main character is a good actor, like Thomas Shelby, he's a good actor. Tom, the, the main character, some around him at pantomime, you know, a bit actory. Uh, and also another one I was watching actually is um, is it uh, Unforgotten on ITV? That's worth watching. Oh yeah. The main character again, she's very good. Some of the round them, in fact, there's another guy in there. Is um, not the Asian guy who's arrested the copper. He's very good as well. But the Asian who's a sidekick, Sanjeev, I think he's not that oh, good, yeah. he's rubbish. Yeah. But the Asian guy who's arrested the copper. He's he's very good, I thought. And the main actor, as long as the main actor's good, with well, the story's based around, it's okay. But um, Louis through yeah, into yeah. that again. And uh, Steve, you've watched anything new? Steve's a good one. P- Pete Paddy's in there. Big I wouldn't put that as first class, but something is quite. It was quite funny. And um, uh, do you know the girl who's in Big Bang Theory? I don't know her name. The blonde. No, no, no. no. The, 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 no. Uh, no. She's, in a, she's in a new drama on Sky One called Flight Attendant. It's quite amusing. Oh, um, I've seen that. I've seen that. Um, she's, very, she's, a, she's an amazing actress. She plays like a drunk um, flight. Uh, uh, Air stewardess, is that yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and um, yes. yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll give it away, but something happens, and then yeah, she's got to kind of get herself out of a pickle. <laughs> but it's quite, it's quite cool. funny. Something right. happens, and she something has happens. to get herself out of a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, you, you should, should, you should write I used, the to recon- I used to do continuity on uh, a TV channel, and um, my scripts were never that good. <laughs> there you go. You can have that for free. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah, I uh, thought uh, so. Nicola Walker's good. Sanji Bhaskar, he, he, I, I don't think he, he was that good, really. I think, uh, but there's there's another guy. He's a he's a comedian, though. Yeah, no, he's, he overacts, you know. Just overacts there. Justin and, hates overacting. Yeah, I, I like it underacted. When's the yeah. last season of that uh, Unforgotten cast? Anyway, yes, yeah, but it's good. It's worth watching that. Um, but um, Louis Theroux is. Um, yeah. So, have you been watching the TV shows or the, um, the podcast? I, I think I do, do you know what? I, said, I did talk last night when you were in here. I, I watched one where, it was, ironically, a dementia thing, which I wasn't sure if I'd watched before. But um, I thought it was very good. But uh, that dementia thing and... Uh, yeah. I watched the Vegas one, uh, Louis Theroux. That was good. Have you seen that one? F- Fald at Charmer. What are they all on, by the way? What? Yeah. Uh, they, they, I play. No, they're on... Um, no, no, no. <laughs> Louis Theroux now on... Um, uh, Netflix. Uh, Netflix have bought him, yes. But the ones I watched, they were very good. I thought it was... Um, the, the, it's quite a lot I've not seen, actually. So, yeah. yeah Senile Sina- Dementia thing. Autistic Kids was excellent as well. Um, and also, it's worth watching now, actually. He speaks to Joe Exotic, you know, Tiger jo- to- Tiger guy, you know, Tiger guy in oh, America, yeah, yeah. who's arrested. Yeah. He speaks to him before it all blew up, Tiger King. And now he's doing a reprisal and he's going with that lady, Carol, the woman who's the, the rival, who Joey's Carol a lot. Carol Baskin. Carol Baskin, yeah. He's doing a, a, a new interview with her and they're walking around Joey's site because it's now derelict. And uh, so that's coming up very soon. Um, yeah, so it's worth watching that one again because it goes back to the... Uh, and it's, he's mad then, that Joey Exotic guy. He's, he's mad anyway. But he's now locked up, isn't he? But it's worth going back to that. And, um, but also, 
out. I don't want. I, I find it annoying. Dragon's Den's new series there, and they're worth watching as you're an investor, I think, because you see what. But Shark's Tank is a lot better in America. But that's on now. But they, they never invest in anything. They never takes any risk. They only invest in a company, which is fair enough. They only invest in a company that's pretty, pretty much proven and uh, needs a bit of cash, you know. So and they t- and they take this. I find it so cringy. I can't watch it. Yeah, they are. They got no personalities, but they also the really confident, and cocky blokes. People on there, or, 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 or women on there, because they've done well at business. They're really cocky. And they, they, yeah, their sense of humor is dreadful. But anyway, um, yeah. on um, Innocent, uh, Faldut Sharma, he was a brilliant actor, I thought, on, on Innocent Fall. Was, unforgotten, sorry. Unforgotten, it's called. Uh, yeah, right. Anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah, Line of Duty was good, wasn't it? No, it's rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. <laughs> Second episode. Wow. <laughs> if you were sucking into that by the hype and the hope and or well, the, 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 no, the hope, the hype and the, and the attention it's getting, right. don't don't be this. Plenty of other stuff on. It's a lot better. Watch the second episode. What? Did you watch the second episode? Yes, it's know. rubbish. It's just on. boring. <laughs> Justin, you haven't watched No, I have. Episode. I tried it because we wrote stuff to watch. And I don't understand. I, I don't understand. What, what, I, I said to Megan, we, we, um, we keep going back to the previous uh, season for some reason. I don't know why. And I don't understand any link between that last season and this season. And the, they changed most of the cast. And the, the new cast came in. It's boring, rubbish. The storylines are boring. I don't know if it's going anywhere. No, no, no. It all links up. And the, the the policeman being the guy from the uh, season one, like that's amazing. How's that going to play out? Don't care. Let's hope it finishes. <laughs> Let's hope they just say that's the end. Good night. We couldn't think so of this. Story. This police force is riddled with corruption, though. So, like, at some point, it, they need to get a handle on that. Yeah. Is it well, based on the Met? Well, exactly. I'm just saying that. Megan, right? There's a guy. Did you see that now? After that, yeah. after that guy was arrested for murdering someone, a copper, we're going to show another one now. Join the neo Nazis. They're not getting their PR right. Are they yeah. the police at the moment? They're right all over. No, and then there was another one as well with yeah. serious allegations against. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Crazy. Dreadful. Crazy. There we are. Crazy. All right, boys. Uh, I think we've done enough, haven't we? Really? Oh, I think we have, yeah. We covered a lot. Uh, yeah, most people have turned off by now. Yeah, yeah. But pity, um, pity. Normally, Paddy's turned off by now. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, cool. Cheers, lads. Speak next week. Okay. Uh, Happy Easter. Bye. The Weekend Podcast on Vox Markets with Justin, Peter and Steve. Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.